Hi there, Susan McGarry Glass here, and we are going to do something called tie-dye glass. And these are a couple of pieces I made some time ago, but I'm going to do one today that is square and in black, gray, and white. So that ought to be interesting, but let's look at them real quickly. Uh, all you're doing really is adding frit to a piece of clear glass, and then um, moving the frit in a way that gives it a design. You can also do this and then add paint on top of it if you want a design added to it. So that's kind of fun, but let's see how it's done. And we'll look more at those later when this one's done, so you can compare. All right, so I've picked out these really, these are just not my colors normally, but I thought it would be kind of fun to do this gray, white, and black design. And instead of using doing the usual circle, I thought I would do a square. Now we've got it on a turntable. That's going to help me out quite a bit. And I've put paper on my turntable so that I can clean up the frit very easily and transport this to my kiln. See, I can just slide that off and transport that to my kiln a lot easier. So those are helpful things. So the first thing I want to do, let's see, what color do I want in the middle? Hmm, let's start with white, I guess, and get some type of tool. This is a kitchen tool found at one of those um, kitchen type stores, came in a set. This will help me get the frit where I want it. So I'm just gonna scoop up a little bit, place it in the center. And if you have a paintbrush or something like that, that becomes very helpful to get the frit where you want it. And for me this time, it's right in the middle. You can use a bigger paintbrush. You also want to stack this up. Since this is fine frit, I'm using fine. You're going to want to pile this up enough that when it shrinks down, there'll be enough frit here to equal one sheet of glass, an eighth of an inch for us, right? So this is an eighth of an inch, and this is an eighth of an inch, but remember, frit shrinks. So for this, I want to go a little higher so that when it shrinks down, it'll be about an eighth of an inch, or three millimeters, right? Now let's take a little gray, and I'm just going to create a ring around that white. And I can actually turn it to make it easier on myself. <laughs> I want a little more over here. And then use your paintbrush. To get it right where you want it. Don't be too particular about it because we're going to be manipulating it more later. We just want to get the general idea. Now let's do black. Get it as close to where you're going to want it, so you don't have to move it too much with the paintbrush. Ooh, I got a lot there. So, I can either take some of that off, or I can just add to this, the other part of it. There we go. It actually landed pretty well. I don't think I'm going to do a lot to it. Let me flatten this. Now, do you see where the white meets the gray? There's sort of a valley right there. That's going to be an issue later. There won't be enough glass. And so you want to try and get that as flat as you can so that you don't have any holes in your glass. And again, don't worry about the shape of this right now because we're going to be changing it quite a bit. I want to get most of this black off of here. There we go. Oh, 
All right, let's add a little gray. All right, and I'm going to put black in the corners. I think I want to add a little bit of black right in the center. So I'm going to create a little hole. like it. This next step is a little scary and you get to pick your tool. I'm going to drag through this to create that sort of tie-dye look. And you can use a popsicle stick, some tweezers. I prefer the back of a paintbrush. I like the thickness of it. All right, good. Okay, let's do the tie-dye. A little scary. Start in the middle and drag. Start the edge and drag in. Let's see, drag in. And switching back and forth, dragging out and dragging in will give you that little point right there. I don't like to push too much off of the edge, but see how I'm getting that little almost uh, leaf tip right there? Because I'm going out and then I'm going in. And that worked out pretty well. Now to keep it in place, because this is going to be difficult to move, I'm going to spray it with some White Rain Pump Hairspray. That's just going to sort of um, freeze it in place. I don't want to get too close to it. Now you'll see where there are valleys here. That will actually fill in. This glass will fill in because we've put a high enough layer on it, it will want to settle down to the six millimeter. Clean up the edges. And now it's ready for the kiln. So I'll stick it in and then we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. Okay, as soon as I shut off the camera, I changed my mind and decided to fill in some of these gaps with some glass. And so right where the white would be, I put a little bit of white. I just think there's not enough glass there and I will have problems. So I'm adding to it just a little bit. The black on these corners I don't want that much of a gap, so I'm going to add to that. I'm not changing the design with this. I'm just trying to make sure that I have enough glass that I will have six millimeters after it's fused. I want to keep that great design though. See right here? There's no other color there but gray, but there's an empty spot. So I'm just going to add a little more. And once I put that hairspray on there, I could see those gaps in the glass much easier. 
sort of compacts the glass a little bit. Makes it easier to see the, the weak spots in the design. Okay, I like that a lot better. I'm going to put this in the kiln. If I can stop fussing with it. I'll put this in the kiln and we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. Okay, it's out of the kiln. It's all done being fired. And I won't be giving you a firing schedule because it'll depend on the size of your project. So if you're doing a small piece of jewelry, you can go quite quickly. If you're doing a larger piece, you're gonna to have to go much slower. So I'm gonna leave the firing schedule up to you. Um, but I wanted to show you how great this turned out. I've got some little areas that are transparent, that there was no frit there. So I could have used a little more frit on this one, but I've got an option. I can put it back in with more frit. I can put it on a different piece of glass, another color, and fill in those gaps with that back color. So I could maybe put um, a beautiful green back there and the green will pop up through those lines or just put white or put it on black. Um, or like I said, just put in more frit or leave it as is. Looks pretty nice just the way it is. So I uh, really like how that turned out. It's got some sharp edges. I would um, definitely clean up the edges, whether you do cold working, um, something like a flat lap and uh, polish it with by hand or, or grind it, put it back in the kiln and fire polish it. Um, and again, I'm gonna leave that firing schedule up to you because it depends on the size of the project. But you could do very tiny pieces of jewelry this way, or you could do very large pieces, um, you know, large bowls, uh, just really endless, the color combinations you could use. And you'll notice the front of these looks a little different than the back of these, just slightly different. This is a little, see how that's just a little, um, sort of messy, all the different colors on top, but on the bottom it's very crisp, the separation between the colors. And on this one, you could um, add paint on top of it. You'll see on the back, uh, there is no paint. You can see it through the transparent section, but this was the, this was the top of it originally. I flipped it over and added this. This is a liner paint that ends up matte. So that was intentional, but you could certainly use one that is intended to be shiny and have a, a shiny um, outline of something on there. So a lot of possibilities with this. I hope you give it a try and share your pictures with me. I'd love to see them. So thanks for joining me. Be cool, honey bunnies. Bye.